السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه وادخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين آمين يا رب العالمين طيب uh, welcome everybody uh, to our uh, second lesson on Tahara, the fiqh of Tahara. Awesome. So uh, Alhamdulillah, last week we covered uh, uh, the introduction uh, and uh, we talked about uh, the types of water. And today, inshallah, we want to go into uh, containers and animals uh, uh, going to the washroom. Uh, we talk about the miswak. Uh, inshallah, hopefully we can get into wudu and maybe maybe probably not wiping over the socks uh, um, insha'Allah so just some review from last week some review from last week insha'Allah um, who can who can give me the definition it doesn't have to be exact of tahara you said tahara okay has two parts of it what is it what did we say that tahara was hmm? I know this is na'am Okay, yeah, when we, we said uh, the exact words were what? Irtifa' al-hadath wa zawal al-khabath. Yeah, so uh, removing or lifting spiritual impurity, the, the figurative kind of impurity, okay, uh, that you can't really see, and the physical, right? Al-khabath, uh, uh, the physical uh, uh, impurity. So it's two parts, al-tahara. You have ritual impurity, right? You have to remove that. And you have to also remove uh, physical impurities as well. Tamam? Tayyip. Jameel. Zakla khair. How many types of water did we say? Anwa al miyah. How many are they? Anybody remember? How many? One, two, three, four, five. Huh? So, tahur, tahir, and najis. So, three. Right. And that answers our next question, which is the tahur. Tahur we said is okay and by the way this part is like when it comes to just uh, knowledge and, and any kinds of knowledge even yeah, especially Quran and other things uh, review is the most important part <laughs> like if we don't review our notes yeah it's like uh, you know uh, you're going fishing without your uh, yeah without your without your rod so uh, I know it's, it's, uh, it's something we're not used to, we're not comfortable with it, but we need to make sure that we uh, uh, review. Why? Because we know that يعني, you're not leaving with more than 20-30%, and then if you don't review for another 7 days, كأنك ما جئت, as if you've never came to the lesson, subhanAllah. That's how, that's how uh, and nowadays even more, يعني, nowadays uh, people forget even faster, you know, because of many reasons even our diet, etc. So we need to make sure that we review. Tamam? And you will be shocked how much you can retain, how much information you can retain if you just reviewed for like 5-10 minutes. Right? Um, and we have so many advantages nowadays, not like the old days. Like even, uh, the, best, the best way is to take some notes yourself. Even if it's on your phone, take some notes. Um, because even if you take 5 points out of, this, uh, out of the lesson, then you can review them quickly. Alhamdulillah, that's great. Uh, but worst case scenario, يعني, you can actually review the recording. It's available online you, on times two speed. And you can do it in 15, 20 minutes. يعني. ف, and this is the most important part. The actual review. The actual review of the material. Uh, uh, otherwise, يعني, it's just going to pass us by. طيب, so we said uh, tahur, the first one. The one that is pure and it purifies. That's the one that we make wudu with. It's, it's pure and it purifies. Then we said tahir. We said it's pure, but you cannot purify. You cannot do wudu with it. Tamam? And then we said that third one is najis. Taban, you cannot, uh, 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 and you cannot uh, pray or do anything with it. Tayyip, Jameel. And the last question, we talked about like uh, the types of water and then the amounts of water, right? Because we said that uh, uh, depending on the size of the water or the container, then some of it, if najasa comes on it, if something impure falls on it or into it, then khalas, right? Uh, what is considered a large amount in the madhab? Huh? So, two, two uh, qullatain, two qullas, or qullatain, the word that came in the hadith, 
is is uh, is, is qullatain. So qullatain is two qullas. Basically, and we said it's it's you can say more than three hundred liters, more than three hundred liters. Just remember, three hundred liters, more than three hundred liters. And we said that this is important to know if an ajasa falls in. If it's little water, uh, water is anything under three hundred liters. When an ajasa falls in, in small amount of water, khalas, we cannot use that water, right? It becomes najis. But if it's a large amount of water, as long as there's no taghayyur, and we said taghayyur from the, from the smell, from the color, right? And from the taste, right? And so a large amount of water, if those things don't happen, there's an ajasa in it, okay, then, uh, then it's fine. It's still good. If we didn't mention another thing. It's not mentioned in the, in the book, but some of the mu'asirin, the... the, the uh, contemporary scholars they mention is like um, uh, big big bodies of water and if I have a lake you know and then somebody throws an ajasa into it is it going to change? no so that one yani, it's kind of obvious but it's good to mention it that you know you'd have to throw a lot of najasa right a lot of najasa so someone might say well okay what if you know like there's places in the world where uh, the sewage goes straight into the body of water can I use that water? well if it changes and the smell changes and obviously then yeah right then a lot of njasa falls into it then uh, then uh, yeah you cannot really make wudu into that right uh, I, I remember there was a place in India like they just it's full of najasat and stuff like that and a river I forgot what it's called huh what's it called maybe maybe yeah, maybe it's that one. I remember I studied it sometime uh, it just popped in my head like uh, it's it's a I think it's a religious place or some kind of uh, it's very, uh, like probably that one wouldn't be wouldn't be tahar Allah alaikum. Uh, Jamil, see it's good. Uh, uh, um, like and so again, like our muraja is very important. Review is very important. Um, uh, uh, inshallah, for us to to make sure that we benefit from this knowledge. and then uh, after review, the the third most important thing is what. You, so the first important thing is that you know. After you have the right shniya, you come to the class, you attend, awesome. The second step is to review, awesome. What's the third step? Naam? Yeah, we actually apply. And, and the applying something, it's stronger than like reviewing. Like if you apply something, you'll actually remember it. Tamam? And so some of you remember, you know, uh, if I ask you to show me how to do wudu, it's not because you sat down memorizing. Okay, it's because you're applying it and so on, right? And so applying helps a lot. Tamam? And... Uh, it's technically our obligation to apply what we learn. Otherwise, it's going to be a hujjah against us. It's going to be a witness against us, right? Fa, fa, uh, we always try, inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who, who uh, learn the knowledge and act upon it. Ameen. Right. The next section we were going to talk about is uh, al-aniya, right? Uh, the containers. So when you talk about tahara, we said, okay, we know about the water now. Okay, now we go to a bit more interesting stuff. The containers that you use, al-aniya, right? The containers uh, that we use, right? Uh, he says that كل إناء طاهر يباح اتخاذه واستعماله. So now we're gonna go to the the containers because this is how you're gonna carry your water for wudu, right? You know when you read a hadith, you know uh, you, you read many narrations where you know uh, you know like Anas رضي الله عنه would go get the water for the Prophet وسلم to make wudu and etc. Right? So we have to see which ones are allowed, which ones are not allowed. So he says that all utensils are permissible, okay, to keep or use, except he's going to mention an exception, right? Because uh, uh, we have, uh, what are you going to do with the container? Either to use it or to keep it, to use it or to uh, uh, to keep it. Use it for wudu, yani, and other things like they include like utensils for eating, forks, spoons, right? All those kind of things, and and things to keep. Like, uh, am I allowed to keep gold, silver? Like this is a, a, an interesting mas'ala, inshallah. Uh, so in general, if anything is haram to use, it is also haram to keep. This is a, a, a rule they have, the Hanabila they have, uh, in, the, in the Hanbali Madhab, is that anything that is haram to use, it is haram to keep it. And you can understand the logic here, okay? So we have some ahadith, I believe it's the hadith of Hudayfa, taban, like I said, this is introductory metan, so we're not going to go too much into the deals, but sometimes it's good to mention it, that we have the hadith of Hudayfa, radiallahu uh, uh, anhu, it talks about that that uh, uh, you know not to, that it's haram to eat or not permissible. The Prophet said that you shouldn't eat with the with with the utensils of gold and and silver. Right? We're not supposed to do that. We're not supposed to eat. You're not supposed to have a gold spoon or a gold plate or a silver plate. 
we're not supposed to do that. He said this is for them in the dunya and for us in the in the akhirah, right? Inshallah in Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people of Jannah. So uh, they took this as to mean that, well, if you're gonna, if it's not allowed to use it, then keeping it is also haram. Why? Because that's gonna cause you to, to use it, right? Um, uh, one of the principles in usul uh, uh, is, uh, is, um, is to close the door for something, right? Saddu um, al uh, uh, they call it. Um, and so uh, an example of that is, uh, and they take this from the ayah, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الزِّنَةِ Allah says, does Allah say don't do zina? He says, don't get close to zina. Okay, so from that we get, we get the principle that whatever is haram, what takes you close to it, okay, can possibly also be haram. And that's uh, down to the, to the scholars to judge. So they say whatever, so in, in the Hanbali Madhab, there's a khtilaf, okay, and, and uh, yani, I believe at least two of the Madhab, they, uh, they say it's okay. It's okay to keep something like, uh, 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 is, it, is it halal to keep um, you know, a, a gold um, chandelier? Uh, what do you guys think in your home? Is, is it halal? So the, 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 like I said, the Hanabila say it's not, right? Unless there is a, a, a halal option to use that item, right? So uh, they give the example of like, for example, a golden ring. If you're single male, and the, uh, this is the rule in the Hanbali Madhab is whatever is haram to use, it's haram to keep. Whatever is haram to use, it's haram to keep. So uh, if you're a single man, uh, if you're a man in general, are you allowed to wear a gold ring? Yes, no? No, right? Okay, طيب. Uh, <laughs> just making sure. طيب, um, so if, you, if you're a single Muslim uh, male living in your house, right, uh, by yourself, are you allowed to keep a gold ring in the house? According to the Hanabila, no. We're going with the madhab here. Saj uh, Sajazda, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> طيب, so according to the Hanabila, no, you're not. Why? Because uh, it's going to cause you to, to, you, to wear it, use it, right? But for them, no. But what if you're a married uh, 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 male, right? Are you allowed to have a gold ring in your house? They said, yeah, because there is a halal option, which is yani, the wife is allowed to wear it. Yani, the wife is allowed to wear the gold ring, right? So that's like uh, uh, the example they use. So this is just a general rule. Uh, uh, the other madhahab, they said, uh, like I said, I'm not going to go, uh, I'm not going to mention other madhahab, except when there are things that are like are very common, very uh, um, uh, uh, contemporary issues. Uh, the other madhahab said, no, actually, the, 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 some of the narrators, they actually had some gold material in their house. And so it's proof that, they, uh, that it was allowed. And they understood the hadith to mean just for those, just those utensils. They actually eat, eat uh, uh, with, with gold and silver. Uh, so all gold and silver utensils are haram to use. Okay, that's haram to keep. This is uh, according to the... طب, طبعا, haram to use, this is all the madhahab agree on this, right? But you can use small amount of silver only to fix... Yeah. Uh, so in the madhab they, they mentioned because we have a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ actually used uh, uh, silver to, to fix one of the utensils. So if you have like a utensil, they would uh, uh, um, uh, soldering, I think it's called, right? Where you have, uh, uh, they would, it's, it's sort of like welding, nowadays welding. They would do it with, with, with silver. They would like put it together. So you would be allowed to use a small amount of silver, okay, just to fix it, right? We have, the hadith, we have a hadith uh, where the Prophet ﷺ actually allowed that. So you can small, uh, use a small amount of silver to fix broken utensils, right? Uh, uh, and, but it cannot be used for decoration only to fix broken utensils. So that's where it's allowed to use a small amount of silver to, 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 to fix uh, uh, like a broken utensil. Tamam? Nowadays, you wouldn't need to do that, right? I think you can easily fix it or you just buy another one. And nobody, I, th I think it's probably more, more expensive to try to... But back in the day, like you had, you know, um, you, know you don't have Dollarama, you can buy for one buck, yeah, any. A, a utensil you know you had a utensil that was probably made of some kind of metal right uh, iron or something and and uh, you would keep it for a long time right and that's why these these rulings are so important when you talk about like purifying your utensils because you only had two or three four or five right and you might say okay well, then let me just close my brain and, and not listen no if you're gonna go camping if something happens if, this eventually will come inshallah uh, to use so it's always good to know this kind of knowledge type what about utensils of the disbelievers, non-Muslims, right? Your neighbor brings you a plate of, uh, um, I don't know, uh, what do neighbors bring you? A plate of uh, 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 sweets or something. Huh? They bring you, uh, they make you some kanafa, right? Um, uh, 
Are you allowed to, to eat from that plate? What do you guys think? Are you allowed to eat from that? Yeah? Everybody agree? Anybody disagree? Disagree? I mean, it depends on what's Huh? Yeah, the, the, the knaf is halal. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> uh, if you guys don't know what knaf is, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a um, Middle Eastern dish. Fa, oh, okay, whatever. Uh, they bring you a plate of, uh, uh, I don't know, well, what's something common? Just They bring you some ice cream in a high. So the general rule is, it's just like the Muslims, it's halal. Do we assume that? Uh, it's it's clean. It's uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's halal unless you know that there's a najasa or there's something haram in it, right? Tamam. Uh, so the utensils of the believers are pure by default, same as the utensils of the Muslim. Same same thing, exactly, right? Uh, 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 unless you see a najasa, unless you you see a najasa or you know that that مثلاً, they cook or they they put bacon on that مثلاً, or they you saw them put it on it. Etc. So then you would you would avoid uh, that one, right? So, مثلا, someone goes to a restaurant and they know that they serve, مثلا, uh, food and they mix it with the the bacon, with the chicken, with. The, so, if you see it with your eyes and you know it's like that, then you shouldn't. Then that would not be permissible to use. Five. So, in summary, all utensils are permissible, everything, all kinds. Okay, uh, 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 as long as they are tahir, right? The material is tahir. It's pure. It's pure material, right? Uh, it's not stolen. Obviously, it's not uh, you know, something that you've stolen, right? So you're not allowed to you know, steal a, um, a bottle, put water in it, make wudu. It's a stolen thing, right? And we said before last week that uh, what's the ruling for some, uh, to use something that is stolen, right? Your wudu wouldn't be valid. And then uh, something is not made as long as it's not made of gold or silver. So as long as it's tahir, it's not stolen, and as long as it's not made of gold or silver, you're allowed to you're allowed to use it. Tamam. So you, are, are you allowed? Just to make sure everybody understands. Are you allowed to make wudu uh, uh, from uh, a golden bowl of water? Are you allowed? No, right? Not allowed to do it. Type. Jimmy. Type. Let's go now. Uh, another thing they mentioned in, 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 uh, uh, in this section about uh, um, tanning, right? Um, and I, I believe the, Han the Hanabal also uh, uh, unique in this, in that they say that, and the issue goes back to. There is a hadith that, that was narrated by the Prophet ﷺ that came late. In the, in the beginning, right? Uh, tanning. You guys know what tanning is? What's tanning? Let's make sure everybody knows what tanning is. What's tanning? Yeah, so when you have like the, the, the skin of the animal, yeah, you purify, let it dry. This is, this is tanning, right? There's a procedure for it. So if you have an animal that is not... Uh, let's rewind. An animal, we say it's... it's uh, how do you know that an animal is, is let's say, uh, cattle, sheep, right? Like, if this sheep is hit by a car and it dies, is this halal or not halal? Huh? It's haram to eat. We call it meita. We call it dead animal, right? We call it a dead animal. Uh, um, let's keep the same car problem. This, this sheep is hit by a car. It's still alive. I come and I, bismillah, Allah Akbar, uh, <laughs> I slaughter it. Is it halal now? Okay, so now we call this uh, like a halal meat, right? Dhabiha, right? This is a, a dhabiha. Type. Jamil. Type. So the first one, are we allowed to use its skin, the dead one, the one that died before we, we slaughtered it? Are we allowed to use its dead skin? According to the Hanabi, you're not allowed to. Even if you tan it, if you tan it, right? You're not allowed to. Why? Because of a hadith that came in, in, in the later part of the, of the, of the, of the life of the Prophet and they said it, it, uh, it, uh, it abrogated the other hadith because uh, we have a hadith that that uh, that say it's uh, it's allowed right the dead animal the, the 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 halal animal that you slaughtered it's fine there's no problem with that right so skin of an unslaughtered dead animal does not become purified through tanning okay so skin of an unslaughtered dead animal we said the one that was hit by a car and it died and you didn't slaughter it then you cannot purify its its skin through through tanning all of its parts are impure except for what, right? Uh, the hair, uh, uh, the wool, the, the feathers, right? And they take this from uh, uh, from Surah Al-Nahl. وَمِنْ أَصْوَافِهَا وَأَشْعَارِهَا مَتَاعًا إِلَاحِينَ I think the ayah is almost like that. I missed part of it, I think. And so Allah SWT says that they're permissible. And He didn't say whether it's for dead or for not. So they took it as general. It is permissible uh, uh, to use their, the wool, the feather. So let's say the sheep got hit by a car, okay, you couldn't make it, it died, right? We said now the skin we can't use, 
We cannot, uh, we, if we tan it, we can't, we can't use it. But the wool, you can use it. The wool, you can use it. The, the, the yani feathers of, of another animal, uh, the fur, inshallah, that should be, uh, should be fine. طيب. They also say, this is interesting, uh, I never thought of this before, but let's say you have, um, you know, you got, uh, you know, you got a camel or you got a uh, yani halal animal, and you go and like you slice off a leg, or something happened, like the leg got sliced off. I don't know, you, with the saw accidentally, and you, um, uh, are you allowed to eat that leg? What do you guys think? Halal animal, we have a, uh, uh, you know, a sheep, right? Um, or like a leg broke off, and so they amputated it, whatever. You're like, should I throw this meat? No, it's good meat, that's a good mashallah. You know? It's like 100 bucks. <laughs> Huh? Can, can, can you uh, just cook it and eat it? Is it halal meat? You never thought of that. <laughs> Is it halal meat or no? What do you think? No, 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 forget mutilate. I guess say it cut off. It was cut off. Or you like, huh? I'm not talking about the act of, of high, but I'm just saying like, you know, uh, it, 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 uh, they removed it or something. It had to be removed. Or another animal ripped it off. One animal ripped the ear of another animal, or something like that. Huh? Uh huh. So, the so, so you're saying it's halal? So, to make any part of the halal of, of the of, of the animal halal, you have to slaughter it. Do you understand? So, if you if you if you remove a leg, methalan, right, and you go eat it. Okay, and the animal's like still alive. You didn't actually go through the dhabiha process. So that meat is, is, is not permissible. It's not permissible, right? Uh, I know this is not the most common thing, that, but, but uh, you know. <laughs> so they say whatever is separated from a living creature is cons considered najis, right? Because it is meita, it's dead flesh. It's not like, if, if, I, if I remove, uh, you know, an ear off a, off, a, off a sheep, this is considered meita. Yeah, it's a dead, uh, it's a... It's a it's, a, it's considered part of a dead animal because you didn't slaughter. It didn't go through the procedure of, of slaughtering. Nah, but the animal, can you eat it when it's alive? No, until you do the dhabiha. Does that make sense? And so, and the same rule for all its parts. Right? The animal, the sheep, can you just start chewing on it and eating it while it's alive? Forget about the torturing and the... It's sedated, yeah, there's no pain. So, the biha comes later, later in the books of fiqh, but, but just to kind of a, a, a review. The biha is you have, to, you have to actually cut, right? You have to say bismillah, and you have to actually cut from here, and the blood has to come out. Is all the blood coming out? No, not all the blood, but that has to happen, right? Uh, and so, if you cut it from here and the blood, it's not, it's not a dhabiha. No, it has to happen. Uh, they, they mentioned even specifically two points that have to come. They have to be cut, right? And uh, the tasmiya, if you forget, yeah, I mean, there's a uh, difference of opinion. So, tafadal, yeah, Maru. Anwar. Yeah, so so um, uh, uh, lead, uh, so these ones, yeah. So that's why in the madhab, if, if the leather, there's no leather here, but I mean, if, if the seat was leather, right, and it was from an impure animal, right, or, 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 a, or a dead animal, basically, it wasn't slaughtered, then uh, according to the madhab, it would not be permissible, right? Uh, other madhab allowed it. Some of the other madhab allowed it because they, they saw that the hadith that Imam Ahmad saw as, as, as abrogating it's not an authentic hadith. They didn't, they didn't see it as authentic. Imam Ahmad saw it as authentic, right? If you remember back in the day, we talked about reasons of difference of opinion. This is a good example of one Imam saw uh, one hadith as, as, uh, as acceptable. And so it abrogated the other ones because it came after. And the other said, no, this one is not uh, authentic enough. So it's not going to abrogate the other hadith. And it's an acceptable ikhtilaf. Type. And so we said, whatever is separate from a living creature is considered najis because it is meita, dead flesh, excluding the hair, uh, right? We said, so if you remove some fur, right? That's why you can remove the fur from an animal, even if you didn't slaughter it, right? It's still, it's still okay. A wool, fur, uh, etc. 
طيب let's go now let's talk about the lavatory or the uh, يعني using the, the washroom and all the things that go with it so when we talk about uh, uh, the lavatory um, we have some keywords that we, we need to discuss we have istinja we have istijmar right and um, so when we talk about uh, al istinja you must have heard this word before al istinja and i'm using the arabic word uh, they say al istinja is cleaning the private parts from impurities in general okay uh, uh, al istinja is 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 it's a general uh, we're not talking about what am i using right we'll see later that al istijmar is specific to using rocks or anything that's similar to it we can do qiyas analogy you know like tissue paper and stuff like that um, but back in the day or in the in the hadith they mentioned rocks right using rocks to remove impurities we're using rocks to remove uh, uh, impurities so istinja uh, in general right it's cleaning the private parts from impurities right the front and the back طيب. so he mentions in the book that it is wajib if anything comes out of the two parts right so when when do i have to do istinja it's it becomes obligatory when uh, 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 anything comes out of the two private parts anything comes out so except except what you guys know this but maybe you never thought of except what you guys are like reading <laughs> except what yeah and if someone uh, 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 you know releases air does he have to do istinja you don't have to do istinja right okay Taib, what else huh so uh, uh, he mentions passing wind right anything pure that comes out if they give the example of al many sperm right uh, uh, you don't have to uh, uh, things that are najis um, uh, uh, but do not make other things dirty this is a, a weird example but they the Hanabila they see that um, the the najasat the impure th uh, uh, I guess something that is impure they make a difference between something that is dry and something that is uh, um, moist right and so they say that if there was a dry uh, if there was a najasa here and it's dry and i touched it and there's no najasa on my hand okay then i'm fine right okay but they say that anything that is uh, uh, um, um what's the word the opposite of dry uh, moist then as, as soon as you touch it خلص, then that's uh, um uh, then you have a najasa and you have to remove that najasa you have to wash you have to uh, remove that uh, uh, najasa right so they give the example of let's say somebody uh, uh, yeah, let's say he used the, the bathroom and what came out is dry and it didn't uh, uh, um, there's no impurity there's no najasa on the area that it came out from okay so they say then the person doesn't need to, to do istinja because the whole point of istinja is what is the physical removing the physical impurity right al istinja al istinja is what are we are we doing wudu here is it uh, 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 spiritual uh, 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 purification no we're just removing removing an ajasa we're removing an ajasa type if something came out and there's no najasa do you have to do istinja if something came out from the two right from the two parts and uh, 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 there's no najasa do you have to do istinja no you don't have to right طبعًا, it's not as common right um, uh, so they give the example of many sperm right if sperm comes out uh, it's not najis, okay, according to the madhab, it's not najis, so you don't have to uh, um, uh, uh, do istinja for that one. You don't have to do istinja uh, for that one. Tamam? Tfadda. Does istinja have to do with water? So we said generally, uh, the general meaning of istinja is, is just cleaning the, the private parts. Specifically, istijmar is with rocks or anything like physical like that. And then you will see that nowadays istinja is used for water, right? for water and we're going to talk about which is better do we combine uh, is one of them better than the other but and this is important to know because um actually let me i'll get to the point that i'll mention it. so he says it can be done using water or stones or something similar water or stones or something uh, uh, similar right so if someone doesn't have water they can still purify the yeah, they can still remove najasa right they can still remove najasa and do wudu is it the preferred way it's not the preferred way it's not the cl cleanest way right but can you actually get into a state of, 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 of uh, tahara? You can. Because remember, if you use the bathroom, number one, number two, okay? Um, you need to do first what? Istinja, you have to remove the impurity, right? Because remember we said tahara is, right? Raful hadath, okay, removing spiritual impurity, which is done with wudu, and also removing physical, physical impurities, right? So you have to first remove physical impurity, 
and then you have to do wudu. Tamam? And a lot of people sometimes like they'll, they'll miss salah because they don't have water or something like that. Let's say they're outside and they don't have water, but they have something to remove the najasa and they'll miss salah. No, you were actually, you were, you were able to remove the najasa and do wudu, okay, or tayammum if you don't have water, and then actually pray. Tamam? Is it the preferred way? No, it's not the preferred way. Tamam? Now someone might say, well, if I use a rock or a tissue paper, tamam, or whatever else people use, and we're going to see there's conditions for istijmaq, isn't some impurity still left in that area? What do you guys think? Can you 100% remove it with, with uh, I mean, we're not talking about water, with something solid. Can you 100% remove it? No. So how, how come you can still pray? Hmm? It dries? No, in that area it's not dry. So the Sharia excuses that small amount. The small amount that cannot be removed, right? The Sharia will, 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 uh, uh, will permit it because it's not logical for someone to remove all the... It's, uh, literally, it's technically impossible. If you're going to use it with something physical, it's impossible to remove 100% of the, of the najas. So it's, it's ex a small amount is excused. A small amount uh, is excused. So we said it can be done with water or stones. Uh, and uh, or something similar we said tissues and any anything that is like similar to that nowadays nobody uses stones but uh, um, uh, if you're out and you don't have anything else you could use that or you could use something else uh, um, uh, that is permissible okay. what's allowed yeah. they say yasir, yani whatever the rock cannot remove or the tissue cannot remove or whatever you use it cannot remove that will be something that is excusable, right? You can't really, we don't have any evidence to say it's this big, this small, but it shouldn't be something that you can, yani, like uh, an actual, like, in a large area, because then it would be something, as long as it can be removed, okay, by uh, like a rock or, or a tissue or something like that, then uh, it should be removed. طيب. Uh, طيب. They mentioned some of the recommended actions when we use the bathroom. You guys tell me some of the recommended actions. What are some of the recommended actions when we uh, want to enter the, 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 the bathroom, whether it's outside or it's indoors or, uh huh. Naam ad dua. Okay, good. So there's a dua when you want to enter, dua when you come out. Um, what else? Just kind of refresh our mind, you know? Active recall. Huh. You guys do this every day, by the way. <laughs> We're supposed to be doing this. These are recommended actions. When we talked about the five rulings, um, uh, we said, what are the five rulings? Just for review. We have something that is wajib, we have to do it. If we don't do it, we're sinful. We have something that is recommended, like this one. If we do it, we get reward. If we don't do it, are we okay? Or we get sin? We're okay, right? If we don't do a recommended action, it's okay. But طبعاً, it's better for a Muslim to do those. Mubah, uh, you leave it or not, no problem. Makruh, if you leave it intentionally, you get reward. And haram, of course, if you leave it, you are sinful. But some of the recommended actions is, before entering the restroom, you say, Bismillah. Allahumma inna a'udhu bika min al-khubuthi wal khaba'ith Allahumma inna a'udhu bika min al-khubuthi wal khaba'ith Some of the madhahab they, they add extra things like here in the madhahab they add extra things right uh, uh, But that's fine inshallah And then you say what? Um, uh, after you leave you say what? Ghufranak right? You say ghufranak yani You ask him for forgiveness for whatever uh, thing you might have done Ghufranak uh, uh, In the madhahab they have a longer uh, uh, dua Like they say for example Alhamdulillah alladhi adhab anni al-adha wa'afani it's just saying, oh, uh, yani, uh, you're thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has pushed uh, away harm from you and, uh, uh, and has protected you. And that's, yani, you can add that, there's no problem. Okay. Uh, another uh, uh, sunnah or recommendation, and this is found in, in, in the books of fiqh, is, is covering your head. Um, covering your head. They say it's, especially if you're doing it outside, they said it's astar, right? It's a recommended thing. You don't have to do it, but it's... it's uh, it's better, yeah, it protects you from yeah, people seeing you, people knowing who you are, etc. Uh, uh, for the person. Uh, to wear your shoes. You can see the logic behind this one, right? Using your shoes. Um, especially like if you're outside, you could be stepping on another najasa, right? So you have to make sure that you're not actually stepping on a najasa yourself, right? Um, uh, and also here, like, but are you allowed to, to, to make wudu uh, barefoot in your bathroom? It's okay, it's fine. As long as there's no najasa, right? You can avoid that. Uh, entering with the left foot, right? When, so when we enter the bathroom, we enter with our, with our left foot, right? And we say the dua. 
uh, uh, to lean on the left leg. So uh, they mention here that it's, it's recommended. Now, if you're doing, if you're using the bathroom old school, right, like the squatting style, right? So if you go to the, to the, to the east, Khalid, you go to other countries, um, they still have the kind of the hole in the ground, right? Um, there's a long discussion on what's better, what's healthier. Um, uh, you know, I remember when I went to Saudi Arabia, like, uh, you know, some places only had that, right? And you had to get used to it and stuff like that. And they say when you, when you do the squat, like when you're going down, right? Uh, it's recommended to go on your left foot. There are some narrations that indicate that, right? And there is some medical angle to it as well, right? Leaning towards your left foot. You don't have to, it's recommended, tamam. Um, uh, exiting with the right leg, right? So we enter with our left and we exit with our, with our right. These are all recommended actions, okay? Uh, if you're doing it outside, it's recommended you're not close to people, right? It's recommended that you are not uh, close to people, right? So people don't see you, you any, your aura is not exposed because it's haram for your aura to be, to be seen. So let's say you're camping and you don't have a lavatory and you want to go do it outside, right? So you have to find somewhere that's far, uh, far from people. Uh, uh, if you're like doing number one, if you're urinating, you have to find somewhere that doesn't splash you, something that doesn't any you know, splash back on you, right? You want to make sure that why, why you don't want you, because it's gonna, it's gonna come back on you, right? And so someone might, uh, uh, and this is where a lot of the contemporary ulama they say, uh, um, you know, about you know standing and urinating, right? Because if you do it that way, it's gonna splash back on you, right? So if something is almost guaranteed to splash back on you, then it would be, it would be uh, something. Uh, uh, it actually might be impermissible. If, if for sure it's going to splash on you, it might be something uh, impermissible, especially if it's something under your control. Another uh, one of the sunnah that they recommend for the males is that to make sure that they empty like the private parts uh, from, from urine, right? And so this is specifically for the males when they're using the bathroom, when you're using like, method number one, right? Sometimes there's some urine left, right? Uh, in the private part. And so you should try to remove it. Some, they say, let's squeeze it out three times. As long as it doesn't physically harm the person or your doctor said, you know, this might harm you. Why do they do this? Why? Because if you don't do that, uh, it might come out later and then make your, your clothes nudges, right? So you want to make sure that you, uh, uh, um, uh, you do that. If you, and every person is different, right? Every person is different. Um, some people, it, it's not a problem for them. And, and if you don't do it, it might cause a lot of waswasa for people, right? They might do it let's say they wash their private part, right? Uh, and then they see wetness. They're going to be like, oh my God, is that urine? Is that water, right? So it's, it's, it's always better to make sure you empty it. And uh, um, as long as you're sure you emptied it and you washed it, then there's no reason for you to think, oh, that's urine. Like there's no reason for that to, to, to follow that waswasa, right? That, uh, um, disliked actions. So what are some of the disliked actions? So they say, uh, um, entering with something that has Allah's name on it. Right? Entering with something that has Allah's name on it. Like for example, what? what's an example of that? Like a shirt. Yeah, like a shirt, like a, you know, a, a necklace or uh, whatever it is. Um, uh, how about a phone? There's lots of, right? Uh, uh, the fatwa, I know it's okay. As long as it's turned off, right? It's, it's, it's not physically the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's, it's like digital, it's... Uh, Right, um, uh, that should be fine, inshallah. What about a mushaf? Is it disliked or it's so it's actually haram uh, for mushaf? It's haram, right? And it's, it's included there just for people who think, oh, it says that somebody uh, with Allah's name. No, the mushaf is different because that is يعني, literally the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and so it's haram to enter a, 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 a washroom with, with a mushaf. But what about the mushaf in your phone? Yeah, you shouldn't enter the bathroom with it. You shouldn't. Uh, unless you're muttar, يعني. I don't know, I'm thinking of a case where you would be... I know what you're thinking, you're a UFC student, you want to go to the bathroom, you have a backpack, and you hang it on the... right? Yeah, I, <laughs> that's a problem. Uh, it's a problem because, like, in the actual bathroom, like the actual washroom, we don't consider all of it a bathroom, right, technically. Like, the lavatory is the place where you enter to actually do, like, number one, number two. But outside, where there's the, the sink and stuff, that's not really a bathroom. So you can leave it there. Tamam. It should be fine. You leave it there. If it's unsafe to leave the mushaf, like if you're worried about your laptop and stuff, if you're worried about your laptop getting stolen, you just take out the mushaf and you put it on like next to the sink. You said fine. 
if someone steals it, inshallah they're guided. <laughs> you know, like, you know, it'll be you fine. Are you allowed to? The Mus'haf? Yeah, take it out of the background. So, so technically, like, we'll talk about it later, inshallah, but most Mus'haf have a cover, so the cover is not really part of the Mus'haf. So you can just remove it or have something in your hand to remove it, and it should be fine, inshallah. No. Type. Um, uh, so that's number one disliked action. Talk without need, right? So being in the math, uh, when you're in the bathroom, are you allowed to talk? Well, uh, uh, if you don't need to talk, you shouldn't talk, right? It's makruh. Yani, um, there's a narration, uh, a man said, Salam to the Prophet and the Prophet didn't reply. He's in the bathroom, he didn't reply. And Salam is one of the things that like, it's like, you have to reply, unless, right? Um, and even we, yani we have a hadith where the Prophet would reply in salah. There's a way to reply in salah, right? And so you shouldn't talk in the, in, in the bathroom unless you, you, uh, uh, you need to. When would you need to talk? Huh? <laughs> if, so, yeah, if someone's knocking, anyone there, and I'm coming in, you're like, no, uh, like, <clears throat> like, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Or if there's like, a, yeah, like some, you're stuck, you're whatever, you're... Uh, darura makes everything okay yani, for that time. Anything that is like an emergency. Uh, Another uh, dislike, actually taking off the clothes before we, uh, being close to the ground. So when you're doing it outside, right, and you're like in a public area, when you do it somewhere where people can't physically see your private parts in your aura, but, you know, you can't like take off your pants, walk to the place, and then sit down, right? <laughs> I don't want to make it too, too much imagination, but you only do it when you're like squatting, right? Why? To preserve the, uh, uh, to, to, to cover your aura, and nobody can see you, to not expose your, your aura. Another thing they, they mention is that you shouldn't urinate in a crack or a hole. Because why? Can you think of why? In a crack or a hole? What's going to happen? Naam? Yeah, yeah, it, it could, it, it, something might come out of it. Yeah, so it could cause some, something that might harm you, right? Uh, and and, and, and some, some say if you're sure that something might happen, like an animal might come out and like bite you or something. Or, uh, so it, it might actually be haram as well, right? Um, uh, to touch the, 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 the private part for the male with the right hand without need. Because we have a hadith that the Prophet said that you shouldn't touch your private part for the males uh, 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 with, with your right hand. Unless you have to. Unless you, uh, unless you have to. Another disliked action. Um, this is uh, something that even in the madhab is debatable. Facing the moon or the sun unless there is a barrier in between. So if you're outside, they say it's disliked uh, to, to, to face the, the, the sun or the moon. Just uh, out of respect for the major signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which are the sun and the moon, right? Um, uh, if you're inside a building, it doesn't matter, it doesn't count. And we're going to see about the qibla as well. There's a hadith about not facing the qibla, right? Like, do east or west, so you don't actually face the qibla. You have a question? Yes, yeah, some say because they are like the, the major signs. Like I said, yani it's something that is, is mentioned in the books of fiqh. Um, a specific dalil, no. A specific dalil, no. Right? And that's, this is uh, yani a great uh, uh, yani kind of a place to kind of reflect about. Uh, and, and that's why we, yani the, the books of fiqh, yani we have to be balanced. The books of fiqh are not the actual revelation. طيب. The books of fiqh are basically... We said that the ulama, the qualified scholars, they take the, the nusus, they take the texts from the Quran, the sunnah, right, and the actions of the sahaba, etc. And they derive rules from that. Tamam. These are things that are asked. And so they, it's their responsibility, as long as they have the knowledge and the tools, to come up with a ruling. Right? Sometimes these rulings are, like if there's no Quran, there's no hadith, there's no action of the sahaba, sometimes they, they go to what? To, to logic, al-aql. So al-aql, you're allowed to use your aql, Right, and so they will say this is uh, not disliked according to something that's similar that the Prophet might have mentioned, and so we, we use analogy and our brain to say that this is disliked, um, um, and so that's how they come with, up with these rules. And sometimes it's because of the time uh, that they live in, etc. So, yeah, we we we, uh, we try to keep a balance. But prohibited actions. So the, yeah, we were talking about the qibla. So it's prohibited to face the qibla, okay, or turning your back towards it, right? This is if you're outside. If you're inside, it doesn't matter because you're blocked, right? You're not technically facing the qibla because that's a sign of disrespect, right? And so facing the qibla, we have a hadith uh, about that. 
Um, and they say as long as there's no barrier, because there's a hadith where the Prophet had a barrier and he, he was facing, and, the, and, and, uh, uh, and so that makes it okay as long as it's between a barrier. Like if you're, if you're in a bathroom here, it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about the qibla. You don't have to be like, oh, right? Um, like our bathrooms are, I think, a little like that way. They're co- kind of close to the right? But as long as there's a barrier. But if you're outside, you try to, sharriq or gharrib, east or west, tabab? or depending on our qibla يعني, here. Northeast, يعني, you try to go this way or that way. If you're outside. طيب. Another uh, uh, one of the prohibited actions is remaining in the bathroom beyond what is necessary. طبعا, back in the day, if you're squatting, how long can you stay? <laughs> like, you can't. One, that's one of the nice things about you know, uh, uh, having those squat bathrooms. is يعني, You cannot go in there with a newspaper <laughs> like they do here. Right? Here, you know, they go in the newspaper now with the phones. right? And these are some things that we should stay away from. Right? Because what, the bathroom, is it somewhere that's recommended to stay in? Right? It's a place of najasa. There's jinn there probably, right? And so you shouldn't stay there for long, right? And so it, it's, this, it's, it's, uh, it's haram to stay there longer than you need it. And one of the reasons they say is it's haram because you're exposing your aura for, for, for longer than it's needed. So when you're using the bathroom outside, you're exposing your aura, yes or no? Yeah. Is it for, for a necessity? Yes. But what if now you're done using the bathroom? Okay, can you just sit down there? You're exposing your aura now. So now they say now this time that... After you're done and you're exposing your aura, this time is not permissible. Does that make sense? This is where they say that remaining, right? Uh, uh, you know, sitting naked even though you are done. Uh, urinating or defecating in a passable path uh, uh, and whatever is like it, right? Um, and this is something nice about the deen, yani. like think about it. Like our deen does not, uh, uh, it's there to protect the, the people, the animals, right? And so places that people walk in, people sit in, you're not allowed to, to, to urinate or defecate in those places, right? So it includes things like shadowy places where people go in the summer to cool off, right? People go under the shade, under the tree, yeah? Imagine you did it and then you sat down and like, look at the harm, right? And, and, and the, 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 the hadith mentions that, you know, this is going to cause people to, uh, uh, you're going to harm people and people will curse you, right? Like this is a reason for someone to curse you. Be like, oh, may Allah curse this person who, yani, you know, did it. Right? And same thing under like a, 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 a there's a, a fruit tree, methalan, yeah, uh, that has fruits. Same thing, right? Uh, uh, anywhere that people might be sitting or a path, right? You shouldn't do it, right? Um, Allahu A'lam. And, and just a side one, like, same if someone has a dog. Let's say someone sees it permissible to have a dog. You shouldn't have your dog doing it in those places, right? Like now here, they do it everywhere. They allow them to do it. They go, especially under a tree. <laughs> where people sit, subhanAllah. So, uh, shara'an, that wouldn't be allowed. That wouldn't be allowed uh, to do that. طبعًا, if you have your dog with you. طيب, al-istijmar, we said, cleaning the private parts with stones or something similar. Al-istijmar is cleaning the stones. Why is this important? Because we're going to say, we're going to ask, we're going to go through what's allowed to use. Like, are you allowed to use like, you know, uh, um, I don't know, bones? Are you allowed to use like dried feces, مثلًا? Are you allowed to use like a cover of a book to remove like, you know, uh, uh, najasa from the back? Huh? So it's good to, you know, these are good questions. طيب. So the sunnah is to first do istijmar and then istinja. So let's say you are able to do, to use water and uh, rocks or water. So the sunnah or the best thing is to use, is to do istijmar, remove with a rock or a tissue paper or whatever, and then istinja with water. Okay. Uh, it is permissible to restrict it to one. Uh, but in that case, water alone is better. So, so you have rock, okay, and then water. This is the best. But if you have to choose, right, water is water is better. Why is water better? Be- because? Yeah, so remember we said the little amount that's allowed with istijma? Water cleans all of that. It removes all of the najasa if you use it properly, right? Water removes all of the, all of the najasa. So three scenarios. Uh, let me just mention these and maybe it'll answer your question. So we have stone and then water. This is the best. Using stone or tissue paper, whatever you're using. And then water. Uh, this is the best. Tamam. Um, uh, using the water only, second best. And using stone only is third best. So using stone only or tissue paper only, it's still acceptable as a way of removing najasa. Tamam. Uh, go ahead. What's your question? What's when you say something similar to stone? What is it, what is it mean? Like we said tissue paper and other things that will remove. Right? But... Something that won't remove and make it even worse wouldn't be wouldn't be allowed, like like nylon, like 
can you remove najasa with nylon? It won't, right? It, a, cl a cloth, yeah. A, cl a cloth would be would be uh, acceptable, right? Because it would remove it, right? It, yani, uh, it would remove it like a tissue paper. So if you had a piece of cloth, right, um, uh, it would be permissible. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the materials now, right? Uh, he says water. Yeah. So we said water removes the source as well as the remains of the impurity. While stones only remove the source, but not the remains, and that's why water in general by itself is better. But the best scenario is to use is to remove it with something solid like a tissue paper or rock, and then use and then use water. You have a question? Baby wipes um, is, is kind of a mix of both, right? Because it's something that's wet, right? So, wallahu a'lam, that would, might be better to use after something solid and dry. Because you need something solid and dry to remove the najasa, right? Yeah, so th that, that, would be, yeah, that would be best to use it after you remove the najasa, right? So if you had like a dry tissue and a wet tissue, right? Uh, it's better to remove it with the dry tissue it's clean, it's, it's better to, to, to remove the nadasa, right? I think you would agree. And then you'd use the wet one to finish, right? If you don't have water. Let's say you don't have water. Method. Does that make sense? If you don't have water. Um, Jameel. Um, so, he says here, istijmar can only be done with something that fulfills the following conditions. So not anything can be used. Not anything uh, can be used. So it has to be something that is tahir. Something that is tahir. What do you mean tahir? We said tahir is something that is pure, right? Something that is tahir. So you cannot use what? What's an example of something that's not tahir? Huh? Yeah, yeah. You cannot use wine. Well, طبعًا, istijmar is something physical. But let's say istinja, right? But some, uh, istijmar, something that's not pure. Huh? No, no. Something physical that's not pure. That's not... Uh, like you wouldn't be allowed to use like uh, an ear of an animal or something. Because we said that's not... It's, it's, it's not impure, right? It's, it's meta, it's not, it's not something pure, right? Uh, uh, or for example, he says, a cloth made out of pig skin. Like a pig skin. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not tahir, right? A, a piece of pig skin or, or leathers. Uh, that is for, it's not tahir, so you can use it for, for, so it has to be tahir, number one. It has to be permissible, so it cannot be something stolen. Tamam? Um, uh, it has to be dry. So that's what you were saying, right? Al-istijmar has to be something, right? If it's wet, it can smear and spread, right? It will spread the najasa. It's not the best thing to use. Um, uh, and we mentioned the principle of the, of the, the madhab that najasa transfers through wetness, not dryness. And that's why it's better to use something dry. It has to be something dry to be counted as istijmar. Uh, uh, and it has to be able to, uh, uh, to purify and clean, right? Uh, uh, so it has to be something that can actually remove something. So we give the example of like nylon, like a piece of nylon. Is it going to remove the, the, the najasa? It's not. So it, would, it wouldn't, uh, 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 wouldn't be acceptable, right? Something smooth, right? It wouldn't remove the najasa. It has to be something a bit rough that will remove the najasa. And that's why you, يعني, generally you would use a rock um, uh, for that. طيب. So we said in, 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 in summer, it has to be something tahir, permissible, something not stolen. It has to be dry. And it has to be something that actually can clean. It has some, something that actually can. Uh, clean like nylon it's dry but it can't clean right? you cannot clean with that so you cannot use that uh, for istijmar type istijmar is not permissible to use the following okay um, uh, can you use dung no like animal dung you cannot use that because it's it's uh, 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 yeah I think there's some narrations mentioning that's not allowed bones right you cannot use bones so if you have bones you cannot use them some narrations say because of they're the food of ikhwanukum yeah, al-jinn, your, your brother's the jinn. You have a question in the back? You guys have a question in the back? Question? Okay, you're just stretching. Of? of? Oh, dung, yani, uh, like the uh, rawth, um, uh, yeah, like uh, uh, that's dry, yani, that's dry. Uh, uh, bone, not allowed. Um, food, right? Min bab awla, right? Because yani, we can't do with the food of the jinn. What about our food? So you're not allowed to use food for it, right? Uh, um, uh, what else? That which is sacred. Things like books, things like the, that has the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on it. Things like that are sacred and, and respectable, you shouldn't use them, right? Um, uh, to, to, uh, for istijmar, right? And, and we said something attached with a live animal. Like Bedouins and stuff may, maybe they, uh, would apply to them. You know, uh, uh, you cannot just use like the tail of a <laughs> of a camel or something like that. 
um, uh, right, to remove najasa, that would not count. Uh, um, and again, this is a zulm and, and oppression for the animal, right? Um, طيب. These are things that people do. Yeah, that's why they're in the books of fiqh. And yeah, if you think about them, uh, one of the madhab, al uh, al of Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, they actually they they uh, a lot of their books have a lot of hypotheticals. The Hanaba not as much. Usually, if you find a question, it's not hypothetical. Hypothetical meaning like what if, like what if you're in the moon? What do you do? Which is the qibla? They don't mention that, but like in, in the books of the the the, the Ahnaf, which is it's good and bad. Yani. Sometimes you go too far, but it's also good because some of their questions that they asked a long time ago, right? We're, uh, we're dealing with them, like they said about prayer, fi, uh, fil yani. What if one day somebody is in the hawa in the air? But on that time, they're like, "What are you talking? Are you crazy? We know who's gonna go in the air." But now we have to deal with it. You know, if you look at, uh, at, at some of the fatawa when the air balloon came out, you know. About prayer, is it allowed? Is it not allowed? Like which way do you pray and stuff like that? And now the planes, right? So uh, fiqh is very interesting. Uh, we're, we're almost done. Um, al istijmar. One more thing about istijmar. Okay, conditions for cleaning with istijmar. So these are, I, th- I believe, there's two conditions. They say it should not cross over outside the place where it customarily appears. Focus with me. What this means. So istijmar is to remove a najasa from one of the, uh, the, the, the yani where the najasas come out, the front or the back, um, using a rock tissue, whatever. Now, let's say you dropped a najasa and it came on your leg. Okay? Are you allowed to use a rock to remove that najasa? They're saying no. They're saying the, 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 the istijmar is only acceptable in the area where the najasa comes out from. Does that make sense? Right, so, so it's only allowed to remove, uh, 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 مثلاً, let's say, from the front, like urine. It's only allowed to do istijmar in that area where it comes out from, where it's usually there. But let's say, yeah, the urine came on your leg, can you just do istijmar to remove it? No, they said then you have to use water. Does that make sense? Tamam? So this is one of the conditions they mention. Uh, uh, so it should not spread the, uh, yeah. And then they say, uh, customer location, meaning the area where it usually comes out from. So it... If a najasa from the back, مثلاً, falls onto your leg while you're outside doing it, right? Then you have to actually wash it with water. You cannot do the istijmar to remove that. And the other condition is, it has to be three wipes. We, we have narrations of using three rocks, right? Or three sides of a big rock, or wherever uh, you're using, right? Minimum, this is the minimum. So what if it doesn't remove it with three? Like three wipes of tissue or something like that. What if it doesn't remove it with three? Uh, you have to do it until you remove it. Until you remove the main najasa. We're not saying 100%. Remember we said the sharia allows a small amount. Um, yeah, you're not allowed to use less than three. Okay? Not allowed to use uh, less than three. What about water? I mean, whatever it cleans. Yeah, there's not, uh, no specific amount of water uh, uh, that, that is mentioned exactly. طيب, um, are you guys down to talk about the miswak? Who should stop? Huh? Let's just cover the miswak inshallah and then we'll, we'll stop there. We have here, um, uh, طبعًا, from the sunan, we have the miswak in other sunan of tahara, right? So, al miswak obviously is well known, uh, uh, the tooth stick, right? The tooth stick. Uh, the tooth stick is interesting because it's one of those like highly recommended sunan. And one of those sunan that you don't see very often. Except when someone like becomes practicing, they use it for a bit, and they like put it away and then it's gone. You're laughing because you've done it before. Um, or if you're living in Saudi Arabia, other countries, it's everywhere. They, they're sold at the doorstep. And what's interesting, like now you see people, non-Muslims, selling them. It's very interesting, right? Uh, I, I saw a company just uh, maybe last year or something, and they're selling. I forgot what they call it, but uh, you know they, they're selling it and promoting that it's healthy for the gums and madriyesh, right? Subhanallah. And it's just kind of a, a quick reminder for us that whatever wama atakum rasul fakhudu. Whatever the Prophet told you to do, you know, like take the nasiha of Nike, just do it. <laughs> like, just do it. Whatever the Prophet gave you, do I have to find the wisdoms now? Just do it. The Prophet uh, he's getting wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And so sometimes we find the wisdoms and then we're like, oh, let's do it. But you're not getting the reward of doing the sunnah now because you're doing it for some worldly benefit. You get the reward when you're doing it because the Prophet told you to do it. But there's a lot of benefits. You can read now, actually, there's a lot of uh, journals medical journals talking about the benefits of uh, al-miswak right 
using the miswak. Um, and so the miswak is one of those sunan mu'akkada, like uh, highly recommended uh, sunan. Uh, uh, and طبعاً, it can be used from different kind of tree branches, but the, the most common is the araq, the one that, that, uh, that the Prophet would use at his time. And uh, it has a specific flavor. You'll know it yeah, if you've used it before. Some companies put extra flavors on them. But the actual chemical that comes out of it, it has a lot of beneficial uh, uh, um, uh, attributes when it comes to the gums, right? So it's encouraged to do it all the time, except. So the muswak is encouraged, sunnah mu'akkada, يعني, to do all the time, except what? Uh, uh, they say, except for the fasting person after zawal. Except for the fasting person after zawal. This is mentioned uh, uh, in the books of fiqh. Why? Well, anybody know why? There's a hadith where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the smell, the, the breath of the, of the person fasting is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than, you guys remember this hadith? So they say because of that, then it's better, that smell is better to keep. This is the, the, it's a logical explanation of why they say it is disliked, right? So it's always recommended, but they say in that time when they're fasting, it's, it's disliked because all, that smell of the, of the breath of the fasting person is, more, uh, is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's times where it's highly stressed. When? Before every salah, uh, entering the home, reading Quran. Uh, think of brushing your teeth, like, you know, before you speak to someone, right? Before you're reading Quran, before you're, uh, um, uh, right? When, when your mouth, uh, when the taste of your mouth or the breath of your mouth changes. These are all times when it's recommended to, to use the miswak. Type, can I also use the toothbrush? If you use the toothbrush instead of a miswak, you will get the word of, clean, of cleaning. Of removing the uh, of cleaning, يعني. um uh, But when you use the miswak, you're getting the word of actually doing the sunnah, the actual miswak itself, and the actual tathir of, of, of the mouth. Um, um, Jamil. Yeah. Yeah, because they say this is when like the person is fasting, and that's when the breath changes, right? Um, uh, um, and this, so so they say at this time. Uh, when the breath, uh, the, the breath of the, you know, the fasting person, like kind of shows up, uh, this is something that's beloved to Allah Subhanahu, so you shouldn't remove it. That's the logic they use. Is there a narration that, or is it just like a about about zawal exactly? Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's just logically they're derived like that. Wouldn't it make more sense what? That is not in the zawal time. No, it's, I think they, they choose the zawal time because people usually wake up after the the nap, and now this is when they're, you know what I mean. So it, it's more about just keeping that breath. So if it, if it's there earlier, if you don't sleep after that, and the breath kind of shows up, then but they're assuming the person goes to sleep, wakes up, you know, for the kind of duhr time. Uh, we'll finish inshallah other sunnah so we have um, these are related to hygiene okay and so uh, it's also recommended it's a sunnah to start with your right side even like when you're doing miswak start with the right side the Prophet ﷺ, general rule the Prophet ﷺ liked to start uh, um, uh, any highly regarded things with, with his right right um, uh, and so like you know eating with the right putting your shoes with the right right um, uh, so this is a sunnah putting oil on your hair and they would say on alternative days, there's a hadith of the said you shouldn't do it every day. So putting oil يعني, for your hair, uh, putting kuhl. Anyone you know what kuhl is? It's, not, it's some, not something that's practiced, but the Prophet he would do it three times in each eye. And I, 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 every time I study this, I'm like, I should try it one day. But it's just, like, it's, it's, just, it's weird. Kuhl is like the stuff you put on your eye, right? And uh, there's a lot of actual medical journals talking about the benefits of al-kuhl. Natural kuhl, not like the chemical one, but natural kuhl, um, uh, putting it on the eyes. And there's a lot of benefits. Uh, people actually cure some of the, the diseases and, and other things that you have in your eye. So, and it's something that and uh, it's some of the ulama used to put it. Fa, uh, maybe one day, yeah, <laughs> try it out. Um, looking in the mirror, right? Why? So you can make sure you remove anything that's not nice or whatever it is. Uh, there's a weak hadith on that, but they say it's it's it's, it's recommended. Uh, putting on perfume for the males, shaving pubic hair, that's recommended. Trimming the mustache, it's recommended. Trimming it, right? Uh, uh, it's mentioned uh, that it's, it's uh, in the hadith, right? Clipping the nails um, and plucking the armpits. These are all recommended actions, right? So it, it means if you don't do it, it's, you're not doing something haram, but it's recommended uh, to do all these actions. The disliked actions, 
They say it's shaving part of the head and leaving alone part of it. al qaza right? Common contemporary issue. What's al qaza That's a long issue. That's a whole lecture by itself. What's al qaza What's considered qaza Right? Some people say, well, all of it has to be the same length. Uh, others say, no, al qaza it means like you have a patch of hair that's like, it just, looks, it just looks out of place, right? And so that would be impermissible. What about like different kind of fades, like if it's just like kind of gradual? Uh, some of the ulama allowed it, right? Um, so, uh, so that's one that's like actually shaving part of the head and leaving alone part of the other, like just say half and half, like it just looks strange, right? Uh, uh, trimming heavily part of the hair and leaving other falls under the same rule because it's something, right? Now, we're not talking about imitating the kuffar. Imitating the kuffar in general, doing anything imitating the kuffar is not allowed, right? And so if you're doing your hair style, like someone asked someone, I want to do a mullet, imitation to the kuffar, then that wouldn't be allowed. They wouldn't be allowed to do something imitating the disbelievers. Uh, plucking out white hair. Uh, so if you have white hairs, it's, it's, uh, it's dislike to pluck them out. Uh, you can dye them, but not hair. You can, uh, but not black, sorry. You can dye them, but not, uh, but not black. We have some hadith mentioning that. And piercing a young boy's ears. Some, some of the cultures, they do that. It's not, uh, some, it's not something that is, is, is recommended. It's disliked. And for a girl, it's okay. For a girl, uh, it's okay. Um, and I think we'll stop there, inshallah. We'll stop uh, uh, there, bi-idhnillah. Uh, let's stop for like, uh, questions. Um, uh, any questions? Actually, uh, one second. This is our last, last slide, pretty much, before the next section. So, some of the obligatory actions. Um, so, one of the kind of uh, uh, issues that separates, or from the sunan of Islam, is uh, uh, um, uh, uh, circumcision. Type. So one of the, uh, uh, the, the, the actions that are uh, obligatory for the male specifically. In the madhab they mention also female, but there's another opinion that it's not. Because it gets into controversial issues now of FGM and all those things, right? Uh, 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 female genital mutilation, right? This is a common issue that's happening in, in parts of uh, uh, Africa and other countries. Uh, so it is obligatory to, cir to circumcise the male and female soon after they reach the age of puberty, provided it is not harmful. And this is a condition, it's not harmful. So it is sunnah to do it before puberty. Uh, and most people do that. They will, they are not going to wait till he's 12 or 13 because it's, yeah, it's, it's tougher to do. And usually they do it, um, uh, um, you know, when they're young. It should be done in a way that is not harmful, right? So you get to go to a professional person that does it. Uh, um, it doesn't have to be a Muslim necessarily. It could be any, uh, somebody else. Also, if harm is feared after puberty, then it's, it can be delayed until there's no more fear of harm, right? Uh, and we said that there's a second opinion, even in the madhab, in, in the hamba madhab, that for the female it's recommended. Taban, just a side issue, uh, FGM or, f or, or, or female uh, uh, um, genital mutilation, people like, uh, they, they equate it to the circumcision that is mentioned in the, in the books of fiqh. They're not the same. That one like takes off the whole, like, almost like the whole private part of the, of the female. Here what they're talking about is like a small part. Right? And the doctors know what, uh, uh, the doctors will, have, will, know, will, will know exactly what we're talking about here. Uh, and we have hadith with the Prophet ﷺ, like a, a woman was, uh, yani wanted to remove it, and the Prophet ﷺ told her not to remove yani, all the way, yani, from the asal, yani, all, the whole thing, right? Uh, the whole skin, uh, uh, because it's not good. And so, uh, they're not the same. The, the, the circumcision that's mentioned in the books of fiqh, for the female specifically, it's not the same as the mutilation that happens in parts of Africa, where they remove everything, so the female does not feel anything, it harms her, and etc. right? Um, just wanted to kind of mention that. Um, and it's this like to circumcise a child at the first seven days of birth. So they say that in the first seven days, and leading up to it, it's not recommended. It's recommended to do it after, like from day eight, right? Some of the uh, fuqaha, they say, so you're not copying the Jewish people, because the Jewish people do that. I'm not sure if they still do it, but back then they would do that. So they say to be different from them, right? We don't, uh, uh, we wait until the eighth day. It should be fine if you, if you, and if it makes things very difficult. Some people do it like when they're in the hospital and the kid is there and the surgeon is ready. It should be fine, inshallah. Um, uh, uh, wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Yeah, we'll stop there, inshallah, because the next part is, is wudu. We'll start wudu, inshallah, uh, next part. Uh, any questions on what we discussed today? I know it's a lot of material. And like I said, it's good to go over it. You can listen to the, uh, to the uh, lecture one more time so that next time, inshallah, um, uh, 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 we can uh, benefit from the review uh, any questions you can't have like if you're a 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Gold. The swords? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sword is different. The sword, uh, it, 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 there's exceptions for the sword and other things like that. It's mentioned later in the book of Jihad uh, uh, when we get there, inshallah. But yeah, there's some exceptions to that. And the thing that carries the, the sword and things like that. There's exception, but it's not all gold. It's just a small part of it. Yeah, and we have narrations that allow it. Um, uh, uh, Wallahu ta'ala, yeah. And then the thing for the, say for example, Al-Qa'a, right? Four? Alcohol, you said, yeah? Mm-hmm. Are you allowed to use alcohol for medical reasons? So how did the knowledge he was using it to like, relax the muscle? He was taking a bath with it, right? And then Umar sent him the things saying that you're not allowed to use it for. Uh, but he said, the process of mentioning drinking it, not using it as a relaxing process. Is that the case that I had in that book or not? What's the rule on that? On using alcohol to, for medical reasons. So uh, uh, I believe that, so there's a difference of opinion actually about is alcohol najis or not. The, the, the scholars, they say it's najis, where they get it from? Because they say Allah says it's rigis from shaitan. And they said rigis is like najis, yani it's similar to that. And so they say it is najis. Others said no, it's not najis. It's a, it's a long fiqh debate. I believe in the, in the Hanbali Madhab, I believe they see it as najis. And so you wouldn't be allowed to use it unless for darura. You wouldn't be allowed to use it unless for, for darura. A darura like... A, uh, uh, um, you really need necessity yeah. you really need it and uh, you know uh, and if you don't use it it might cause you harm so that would be a law alim now any other questions barakallah fikum jazakum la khair inshallah we'll continue next week with wudu inshallah wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh jazakum la khairan